Okay, welcome back to Members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Jürgen Moltmann in Plain English by Morrison. We're going to look at the uh, first half of uh, Moltmann's book, The Spirit of Life. It'll be the first half of uh, 195 to 213. It's chapter 9 in Morrison's book. And it's uh, Moltmann's uh, systematic new metallurgy. Let's go to block 1. Okay, the spirit of hope. The spirit of hope is only the spirit of Jesus Christ, of a remembered past crucifixion and an anticipated resurrection. Moltmann says we have a Christological pneumatology. Our pneumatology is centered in Christ. It is a Christological pneumatology. Through Christ, we are desired by God. Our hope through Christ is in God. We experience in Christ God's hope for us. We recognize in Christ God's hope for us. In Christ we are awakened. We are made alive to a divine corresponding hope. I think it's interesting that uh, Moltmann says, well, God has hope. For the creation he created in his own image. He has hope for us. He offers us grace through his son. But God has hope for us. He expects the best of us. So we become awakened to a divine corresponding hope. We are drawn forward by the experience of spirit. Within the divine mystery of this experience. The realm of spirit is a mystery, okay? No theologian has figured it out perfectly. We can't explain the realm of spirit in rational concepts and rational uh, logic. We experience the realm of spirit. It shall always remain slightly beyond us. It shall always remain transcendent. It's a divine mystery. In this mystery, the Father waits for us as prodigal sons and daughters. We are loved by God as his image on earth. And uh, just like Karl Barth, Moltmann references the parable of the prodigal son. Karl Barth's favorite parable was the parable of the prodigal son. And uh, I like the fact that Moltmann brings that up in this uh, systematic pneumatology. Because it's a unique way to think, but uh, we're awakened to a divine corresponding hope. You know, we talk about our hope that we have as Christians, but we participate in a mutual indwelling. We abide in Christ as Christ indwells us. And there's a mutual hope, okay, to correspond to that mutual indwelling. We abide in Christ as Christ indwells us. And we have hope for God's kingdom as God has hope for those created in his image. There is a corresponding hope. That's an interesting idea. I like that. Let's go to block two. The realm of spirit, the pneumatology of God's co-suffering love. What does the realm of spirit reveal to us? It reveals to us God's co-suffering love. He suffers with us in our present unredeemed existence. He suffers with us as we uh, work through the challenges of life, the daily challenges, the challenges that are ahead of us uh, as individuals and as a community of believers. God suffers with us in co-suffering agape, sacrificial love. God endures suffering we are in a journey within God's triune history toward a new creation. It passes through suffering toward the time when God will be all in all, says Paul. There will be a time in the future uh, end of days in the eschaton when God will be all in all. So we're looking at a pneumatology of co-suffering love. We reject the apathy of the postmodern era. We suffer the pain of 
the unredeemed present existence. And uh, as we suffer this unredeemed present existence, we are drawn forward by the Holy Spirit, the power of hope within us. Resist the apathy of the soul. We are drawn forward by the power of the Spirit and the power of hope within us. Resist the apathy of the soul. So, block 203, God's co-suffering in our Subjective power of hope brings about our sharing in God's pathos. We share in the compassion and the sacrificial love of God. By going out of our meditation in solidarity with those who suffer. Matthew 10.39 He that loses his life for my sake, for the sake of Christ, shall find it. If we go out of ourselves and take the risk of taking up solidarity with those who are poor, with those who are suffer, then we are taking up solidarity with those who are also embraced by Christ. So we are losing our life for the sake of Christ. And in that way, we shall find eternal life. We shall find the life that matters. We shall find real substantial life. In that way, we find abundant life. The reclusive place of the inward soul of the monastic cannot be the exclusive focus of the gospel. It is not. It is not. Meditation must be coupled with praxis. Very powerful. Let's uh, go on to block three. Pneumatology and our concrete bodily existence. Concerning our bodily existence, we reject the idea of monastic reclusion. We affirm Galatians 5.17, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. They are contrary to each other. But Moltmann says Paul is speaking in an apocalyptic way. We interpret it in an apocalyptic way. The flesh is the unredeemed present existence longing for God's future. In this verse, the flesh is the unredeemed present existence longing for the future eschaton. Paul is speaking apocalyptically. Pneumatology in Paul's apocalyptic. Resurrection means resurrection and redemption of bodily existence. We are redeemed with the earth. We look for the parousia. We do look, we do look for the coming of God in this earthly existence, in our next moment in our eschatological life. We look for the parousia, the coming of God, in the next conversation we have, in the next encounter we have, in this earthly existence. The realm of spirit equals the dawn of God's coming new creation. Well, when does that happen? It's happening now to those who perceive spiritually. The realm of spirit is with us now. It is behind the veil of finitude, it is behind the veil of surface reality. The realm of spirit exists. It is moving from dunamis potentiality to energy actuality. It is behind surface reality. And we get we catch glimpses as we look at life through spiritual vision and spiritual perception. We find signs of what God wants to do. We find signs of a emerging coming forth of the kingdom. And we recognize those signs and then we are drawn to participate in that uh, emerging moment of God's kingdom. But we have that awakened spiritual perception. So the realm of spirit equals the dawn of God's coming new creation. Finally, pneumatology and the signs of God's new creation. I love this. I love this, what uh, Morrison found in Moltmann here. The Spirit sanctifies and awakens our new perception. Then we perceive the presence of God and his kingdom behind surface reality, behind finitude. And in 1 uh, 1 Corinthians 6.19, this is why our very bodily existence can be recognized by Paul as the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
because in this bodily existence, we participate in a realm of spirit. And uh, we can look at our bodily existence as a temple of the Holy Spirit. We abide in Christ as the Holy Spirit indwells us. That is the truth. Very important to understand this, that uh, in this lesson, which is the first lesson on the spirit of life, the uh, first half of uh, Boltmann's book, The Spirit of Life, <clears throat> that uh, number one in block one, note two, we're looking at a, from Boltmann, pneumatology is Christ-centered. It can only be Christological pneumatology. It has to be Christ-centered understanding of the spirit. Through Christ, we are desired by our Father. Our hope through Christ is in the triune Godhead. It's in God. We experience in Christ God's hope for us. We experience the love of God and his hope for us. In Christ, we are made alive. We are awakened to divine corresponding hope and divine corresponding love. Tremendous truth in that note, block one, note two, tremendous. For Moltmann, pneumatology has to be Christological pneumatology. The doctrine of the Spirit is a Christ-centered doctrine. The doctrine of the Spirit is always a Christ-centered doctrine. Now, block two, uh, note three, God's co-suffering and our subjective experience of the power of hope brings about sharing in God's compassion, God's pathos. Because we go out of our meditation in solidarity with those who are poor, in solidarity with those who suffer, we affirm Matthew 10:39, he that loses his life for the sake of Christ shall find it. The reclusive place of the inward soul cannot be the exclusive focus of the gospel. It cannot. Yes, there can be reclusive moments of meditation and renewal and meditation, but it can't define the entire Christian life. It's a part of the Christian life. It cannot define the entire Christian life because we go out of our meditation in solidarity with those who are struggling, those who suffer, those who are poor. We go out of our meditation to take up the signs of the unfolding of God's kingdom behind surface reality. And then in three, note, uh, well, note two, block three, let's go to note two. Let's go to note two. Resurrection means redemption of bodily existence. We are redeemed with the earth. We look for the parousia, the coming of God, in this existence. The realm of spirit is the dawn of God's coming new creation now. We look for the dawn. We look for the signs. The dawn of the coming new creation means we look for the signs of the coming new creation as they uh, are recognized through spiritual perception. And then that triggers in us, it persuades us to take up a participatory mission effort to bring that sign forward to realize God's kingdom. It's really a very uh, powerful pneumatology, and this is, uh, remember, the first book that Moltmann wrote on the Spirit was The Church and the Power of the Spirit. This is his second book on the Spirit. This is his systematic pneumatology, The Spirit of Life. And uh, this is our first look at it, the first half. So next lesson, we will take a look at the second half of this book, uh, the second half of Chapter 9 in Morrison's book, which will uh, wrap up uh, Moltmann's The Spirit of Life. But what a tremendous beginning here. Very, very, very powerful. And I love the fact that, uh, uh, that we are awakened to a divine corresponding hope. You know, we think about, all right, we've been filled with the Holy Spirit. We have hope. We don't think about mutual indwelling. We don't think about the mutual hope, the mutual uh, hope that uh, 
God has toward those who have been created in his image. He hopes and loves us. He hopes for the very best for those who have been created in his image. Very, very powerful lesson. Uh, That's going to wrap up uh, the first half of the Spirit of Life. Next lesson, uh, we will conclude Chapter 9 in Morrison's book and conclude Moltmann's book, The Spirit of Life.